Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's another unboxing day here. I would have never thought this series would become as popular as it has. Unboxing guitars is apparently more popular than teaching you guys about them. But maybe it's just the short informal little doodads I do about these guitars, but I enjoy doing both of them. So this one is a guitar that I did not buy and I'm not selling, but I'm not keeping it either. <laughs> so what does that mean? This is a consignment piece, but just for the video, they don't actually want to sell it. A father bought this guitar for his son and I guess they both watched the show. So he wanted to send this in as like a, a Christmas surprise, just as the entertainment value of it, as well as to teach the followers about this kind of interesting brand of guitars. And I'm pretty excited to do this. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research myself because, well, <laughs> it's not a Gibson, but it's kind of a Gibson at the same time. And let me tell you, he definitely did a fantastic job packing this. Air cushioning, double box. Actually, just in case you guys missed it, this is a single wall box, but this was a double wall. So he technically did a triple boxing. But a triple boxing for you guys means a, <laughs> a double unboxing, which will kind of make up for a guitar that I accidentally missed recording the unboxing for. But we'll see that later in today's episode. This is interesting packing material. It's like a, a fancy wig. <laughs> so what's inside of this little Gator Les Paul case? More bubble wrap. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think this guy actually sent me photos of this guitar before he sent it to me. Cause I was not expecting a red Les Paul custom. I can definitely tell he's watched my unboxing videos as well as Reverb Shipping Guide. Oh, Orville by Gibson. So what's going on here? We've got a perfect Les Paul body shape. We have the perfect Gibson headstock, but it's not an actual Gibson. I'm not gonna spoil too much because, well, I mean, you gotta save something for the full review and demo, right? But Orville was basically a brand that they did where it's a Japanese made guitar, but it was officially licensed by Gibson, something along those lines. I'll get you guys some more detailed information well, again in the full review and demo, but first impressions, it doesn't quite feel like a Gibson. It's very close. There's definitely some things on here that still feels like it's an overseas made instrument, but I'm going to be looking to do this review this week because I want to get the guitar back to them but I would guess somewhere around Wednesday, Thursday, depending on how my schedule is. And now it's time for our sponsored unboxing. But before we do this, we gotta choose the winner of the Native Sun straps. So we'll go to our random comment selector, put our video in and choose our winner. Congratulations. I'll send you an email and I'm gonna give you three days to respond before moving on to the next guy. So this sponsored unboxing also comes with a giveaway. I believe this one's USA only. I kind of forgot to uh, verify that with them, but last time it was, because this is a repeat sponsor from Mellow Audio. Last time they did a full review and demo sponsoring, and it was for a product that was similar to this one, but it had a built-in audio interface. So this one is just a MIDI foot controller that you can use with a bunch of different stuff. It's basically just to make it easier to use on stage. People really do enjoy these things. Let's go ahead and unbox this real quick. The packaging is very similar to last time. It just kind of slides out like that. Then it opens up kind of similar to like that wah pedal that I was familiar with. I think I, my first pedal ever, I think I got on my 13th birthday, something like that. But you get your nice little MIDI commander manual that says thank you on the back. And these instructions are usually very helpful. But here we go. It's, you know, a relatively light profile. It's not like super huge or anything. And it seems to be made of very similar materials as that last one. The buttons. Eh, a little bit noisy, but I guess it's good to know that it's working. 
And inside here you also have a few of the cords that you'll need to uh, equip this to whatever you're putting it to. So if you're interested in being part of this giveaway that Mellow Audio is sponsored, all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Leave a comment and end it with US so I know you're within the US. And here's where I'm gonna change things. If you go to my website, troglisguitarshow.com, I'm starting a weekly newsletter. Since I tend to have issues getting a hold of people who have actually won these because they don't have an email listed on their account, if I happen to choose someone and I can't get a hold of them within that three days, I will then go to my email subscription list and pick my winner from there. So that's an additional way that you can win if somebody doesn't claim their prize. Because I've got a lot of companies sponsoring these giveaways and I always have fun taking a look at these items. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you check out their listings on Amazon? I'll leave a link in the description too. Huh, how did we get here with a guitar on the table, you're asking? Well, apparently I didn't hit this little button right here quite good enough. I know I hit it, but it didn't start recording. So this came out of this box. I'm not gonna pack it back up and fake it because you'll be able to tell anyways. But I bought this guitar to help me illustrate one of the new strats that I bought, the Strat Ultra. And I bought this one because it is also called a Strat Ultra, but this is the original one. And what's kind of cool about this Stratocaster is it's got a flame maple top to it. It's just a thin veneer, I've been told. But the back, it also has the flame maple veneer. I mean, that's not something I'm used to seeing on a Stratocaster. And I just love this finish. It's like a, a bright blue turquoise, but kind of dark under sea like. I mean, in the camera, it's almost showing up way darker than it is in person. But the edge is almost just like a really dark blue, slightly black color. And it's got an ebony fretboard. How cool is that? So it'll be cool to check this one out side by side with the new Strat Ultra. And hopefully we can learn something from that. And now the unboxing that you probably clicked this video for. The guitar I was tricked into buying. Now if the guy who we work this deal out does come through or sees this video, I'm not upset, dude. Just let me know that you don't want it anymore because I would hate to sell this and then you come back saying, yeah, yeah, I still wanted it. But what happened here is during my Trade Tuesday series, which I just recently wrapped up, you can check out that video right here. There was once a trade for like a limited edition Jaguar or Jazzmaster or something. It had three pickups and it just didn't end up working out because I think I ended up doing another deal before, you know, he saw my message or something like that. So uh, it was probably about a month or two after that, he said he really wanted this guitar and was wondering if we could work out a deal where I buy it brand new and then we trade it for that guitar. So over the course of a week or two, we kind of worked this deal out where I bought this brand new from Musician's Friend and I was going to do the review and then send it on to him. Oh, and by the way, notice how Musician's Friend packed this in a way different way this time. Remember last time how I said there wasn't a bunch of tape? This time they got super wide tape. It looks like two coatings and they definitely put a lot more packing materials in here. So kudos to them on that. So in order for me to do a trade and make sure I don't get scammed since I'm a very reputable online person, I have them send me the guitars first. So this guy needed a little bit of help getting it shipped out. So I sent him a prepaid UPS label. And I also scheduled a pickup. And that cost me, I think like $5, something like that to do. And then plus the UPS label. Nice, we even get a fender box this time. But I noticed that the day it was supposed to be picked up when the guy said he was gonna be home, it never happened. And here we are nearly two weeks later, he's never responded to any of my emails again. <laughs> so at this point, I'm pretty sure this is just my guitar now and I'll have to sell it to someone else. But that's how I got tricked into buying this. I was initially going to go with my instincts and wait to purchase it until I knew for sure that I had the guitar, but he kept saying he was sick and he didn't have much time. Something along those lines that he was really excited to get this. So I was hoping that I could line this up where I would get it for Fender Friday. I could do the review and get it out to him as soon as possible. But unfortunately, it didn't quite pan out that way. But inside here, we have a brand new Fender and apparently a gig bag. 
And wow, they actually pack these things pretty good. Looks like you get a little topper right here that kind of secures it into place. They put your straps right there. And even a bottom piece. I would say Fender does a pretty decent job packing their gig bag instruments. So here we go. What was the Fender guitar brand new that I was tricked into buying? <laughs> I'm sure musician's friend to take it back, but I don't know. I kind of like the musician's friend guys. I don't like to abuse them too much. <laughs> I think I'll do okay on this one. But this is one from the Ventera series. I worked a deal with someone else that I was going to buy him one brand new because they just wanted me to do the review of it and they were going to purchase one anyways. But then they ended up having like a car bill or something too. So well, I kind of have a history of this model just not working out. But this is the 60s Fender modified Jaguar from the Ventera series. It's the one in that Ventera video that I was like, huh, that's probably the most interesting one that I would check out because it's got this humbucker situation here, which you don't normally have on a Jag. So this will be interesting to get to experiment with these. It's kind of similar to a Jazzmaster in a way, but you got these thingies that I'll have to figure out what they do. But just looking at this, I think Musician's Friend did me a solid. Do you guys see this really cool Pal Farrell fretboard? It kind of looks like a really cool rosewood with a bunch of streakiness in it. But look at this neck. Do you guys see the bird's eye in there? I'm really hopeful when I turn this around it's just gonna be a beautiful neck. Eh. <laughs> A little bit disappointed, but hey, at least we get a little bit of bird's eye. But these things are made in Mexico. I'll do a review of it, and as of right now, it'll then just be for sale like any of the other new guitars I review. But hey, that was a, a fun little story. That bridge seems set up in a not very good way. Moving on here. This one's going up to Canada. It took me forever to find this exact guitar in this configuration. And after all that hard work, almost nobody wanted it. <laughs> it sat for about three months and then it found its new owner up in Canada. So just in case you missed the episode on this one, this is an Explorer XPL. It's one of those really strange guitars from the 80s. It was only around for about a year. It's just kind of goofy. It's based on an Explorer, but slightly smaller. It's got this extra cutout here and you've got the hockey stick headstock. And this guitar kind of had some drama behind it when I bought it because the guy said it had the original pickups, but it didn't it had one of them and some other replaced Seymour Duncan so this was just a, a big mess for me to find an original style pickup get that restored before I did the review and demo but hey I'm happy I did the review and it's going to someone who appreciates these Norland era oddities the hardest thing about international shipping is your dimension sizes, especially for large rectangle cases like these, because the post office, USPS, is generally the cheapest and sometimes the quickest way to get it to an international destination. But finding a box that'll actually work for this case and, you know, fulfill their strict size requirements is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna have to doctor this one up. And to close out our unboxing video this time, this guitar. I think you already know what it is. We just did the review yesterday, but if you missed it, it's right here. The Slash Antique Vintage Sunburst Color. Les Paul. Man, do you guys know how long it took to sell this guitar? 24 minutes. Uh, very savvy buy it now buyer. Just took it home. And I can see why. This is such a beautiful finish. But just a few clarifications that I want to make about this guy. So we found out what these things are. These are the new S series Schaller strap locks. Basically, this is just all one piece. There's no more screw. So they're supposed to be more secure, but they do not fit the old Schallers. So that's why they look like Schallers, but they, they don't fit the old counterparts. But I saw one comment say that this kind of reminded them of the Antigua finish from Fender. A little bit, but those have more of like a light brownish gray. So the outside would be a little bit lighter. But then, yeah, that is pretty similar. It just this one's transparent. 
but it also reminded me of a Gibson finish called Latte Cream Burst. But let's go ahead and get this one packed up and on to its new home. I hope your troglodytes enjoyed this boxing and unboxing episode. Good luck on that Mellow Audio giveaway, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.